Hey everybody, Will Alexander from Will Alexander's Dog Show Tips, brought to you by Canine Chronicle TV. Today on the interview chair we have International Aubrey Judge, Mr. Robert Dawson, also a pug enthusiast. Um, so sit back and enjoy. Hi everybody, today we have the pleasure of, in the interview chair, we have Mr. Robert Dawson, originally from Australia, now living in Korea. How are you, Bob? It's good to see you. Yeah, it's great, Will. It's uh, been a long time since I saw you. Yeah. Uh, I remember you in, the ring, in Reno last year sometime. Yeah, well, uh, been in, years ago, at Erie Shores, maybe, I think. Erie Shores, yeah, maybe Erie Shores. Yeah, uh, yeah. so I was in Canada, I think, uh, last, yeah, about two years ago. Well, we like having you, so... <laughs> <laughs> How are things there? Yeah, it's great. Uh, career, of course, I've been here because of COVID for the last uh, six to eight months. We've I've not left the country. However, you know, we have had a dog show here. We had uh, we have dog shows regularly, and uh, I did judge here. Uh, had a very good entry and uh, some nice dogs. Oh, so you know, it's the dog world is continuing quite nicely. Um, but I think overall, uh, you know, the place has. Uh, progressed on much faster in the last few years. I first came to Korea um, maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago to judge. And uh, I've been here now, living here now six years, and it's much more active in the dog world really? than it was 15 years ago, yeah. much more. Oh, very nice. Mm. Well, it's good to hear the dog world is still moving over there. Mm. All right, I'm going to get right into it, Bob. Tell me how you first got involved in dogs. Well, you know, I come from Australia. Yep. And uh, maybe Australia is fairly similar to Canada uh, in some ways. Is that, and I come from rural Australia um, in a place called Rockhampton, which is a small city on the Tropic of Capricorn. And basically, I was involved for many, many years in breeding and showing poultry, and particularly bantams. Uh, and I did a lot. I started off when I was four years old. Wow. With my and uh, I did that for many, many years, all throughout my high school years. And uh, in fact, all throughout my primary school, as well, high school years. Um, and of course, in Australia also, most um, judges, because you don't really have a chance to uh, have individual judges for poultry and dogs and cats. So many of the judges in those days that have the same judge. Uh, oh. and and they would do one each day. One, you know, dog. It was always in. <laughs> I think it was cats on Tuesday, uh, dogs on Wednesday, and chooks on Friday. So that thing. So they and they come and do the whole lot. And there was a very famous judge there called Billy Duckworth, and he's been. He was well known in Australia. He he was the you know he's been dead many years now, but he was very famous and. Uh, you know, he kind of enthused me to also get into dogs as well. Um, and a very close friend of his, an old guy named Taffy Jones, uh, who lived nearby Rockhampton, he, he bred and showed uh, pugs, um, uh, but also German shepherds. He was, he was one of the last people to bring in German shepherds into Australia from England. You know, of course, they were banned for many, many years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you couldn't bring them in. And so he was one of the last ones. So he had a quite a nice line of the old English type German shepherds. Uh, but he also had poultry and bantams. And so basically I got involved with him and he also had pugs, which of course became my breed eventually. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, they're not really mentors, but they're really just friends or, uh, you know, they have the kid around to, to look at the dogs or look at the chooks. And so eventually you learn things and you, you find out about such things as showing. But basically I started off in, in showing uh, poultry, particularly bantams. And uh, I always remember one of my famous, I, I did win best in show once uh, with a, uh, a, a, a bantam, which was under Billy Duckworth. So, you know, it's, it's a, it was an exciting young life at that time. Uh, to do to be involved with animals as well, and and to involve a lot of adults as well, because you know one of the things I found great about that was that I in fact 
um, would attend all of the uh, chook club meetings and the dog club, all these different meetings where, you know, I was the youngest person there, but at least I, I learned how to communicate with the, the, the other groups. And it, and it helped me, even today, I, I look back on that, uh, particularly with dog shows. I, I, the part I love, love about dog shows most as a judge is sitting around after the dog show, talking to the to the experienced and old and different other judges, different breed judges, and just talking about things which, you know, you, you'd never think about, never read in the book. Uh, that's the, how you learn, you know. And you, that's the way you learn. Right. Yeah, and, and I find it still very much today. I so missed that part of it. Sorry. Yeah. How yeah. old were you at that point? How old were you, Bob, when you, when you, when you were attending these meetings and... Oh, when I started, I started when I was seven or eight years old. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then I, I eventually went to university at uh, 17. Um, you know, I was, uh, I was one of these ones who finished high school rather fast, and I was at university. So I went to university and uh, in a place called Townsville. It's not nearby, but the thing is, after I went to university, uh, I decided to leave Australia, and, uh, and I went to a place called Papua New Guinea, and I went to Papua New Guinea, and of course, that wasn't, you couldn't really do uh, anything with chickens or with dogs or anything really. It's, a, it's quite different. Um, and what so. What drew you there? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, uh, yeah, I was um, originally I, I was a volunteer teacher. So, you know, I, you know like a lot of like like Australians and Canadians, I'm sure, they kind of, when they finish their university, they like to go and explore the world. And exploring the world, of course, is quite quite interesting if you can go very close to your home but still be exploring the world because Papua New Guinea is and still is quite different to Australia. Um, but I enjoyed it a lot and I stayed there for quite a few years. Um, and I, I basically got to understand different cultures and different ways of handling people and ideas. And that really decided me on becoming a... Uh, like an international civil servant type person or international uh, worker. Um, and that's and so after I finished in Papua New I went to the Philippines and I uh, stayed there for many, many years, 28 years. Wow. In the Philippines, I, I was there. Um, yeah, I, I look a lot uh, younger than I am. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I was there for 28 years. Uh, and uh, enjoy, enjoyed it a lot, and of course got very actively involved in the, the dog world. Um, and uh, right from the very beginning, I was there. And as I said, you know, I was into pugs uh, quite early on, and uh, then got involved in clubs and and different other things. So it was kind of like uh, you know quite an interesting period also at the very beginning, because at that time, of course, was. Politically, Philippines was not very stable at that time. Um, you know, we had, uh, I think there were some like uh, 12 coup d'etats in about 10 years or something like that. There was a you know, there was, there was, it was Marcos, when Marcos was thrown out. Now, because Marcos was very, very into dogs, his daughters were. Oh, he had, oh. yes, he had his, his daughters had some extremely good pugs. Um, they, they had some very good dogs. They used to be very much involved in the dog world. Um, but, of course, they left <laughs> when um, Marcos left. And uh, but, uh, so it's the actual um, Philippines uh, had a very long history of dogs. Um, in, in the dog club in Philippines was one of the very first to start in Asia. Um, and it was actually organised by the Americans who were there. As you must you know, even when I was there, the Americans were thousands and thousands and thousands of Americans because they had all the bases. Mm. But the Americans there created the the uh, dog club uh, in the sixties, early sixties, and they basically uh, created the club and uh, and uh, also had got a lot of local people involved. Some of them are still there now, and so they basically developed the whole dog world. Yes. And actually, uh, yeah, one I was judging the states maybe. Well, 20, 10, 15 years ago, and I was doing um, uh, the chows, and uh, I met the person came and said to me, "Oh, you know, he was involved in the in the Philippine club when in 1964 or something. Uh, you know, it's, there was this, this long tradition of the of the of the US and 
um, in the Philippines, in the dog world as well. Um, and so, you know, it was very, very interesting to see that. Mm. So, your pugs, tell me how you got started in your pugs. Oh, pugs, as I said, uh, Taffy Jones had pugs. Was that your first breed to show, was the pugs then? Um, the show, yes. I, I, I had, um, uh, like every Australian has, is a fox terrier. Um, everybody has a foxy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, we've, we, you know, we had various dogs. Uh, but actually my very close friend, who kind of like we were born together, um, she has had corgis all her life. And still has corgis today. She still shows corgis very well. Um, so I, I grew up a bit with corgis as well. Um, you know, she'd take her corgis to the dog show and I'd take the chooks to the chook show type thing. Um, so, but, uh, so, but basically, yes, for showing was the pug. And, um, you know, I was very lucky because I got in contact with some very good pug people. Um, you know, of course, I, um, I, I knew... Um, you know, the US had, in my mind, some of the best pugs. Some, of course, in England I also liked, but I felt that the quality at that time, 20, 30 years ago, was really in the uh, East Coast pugs in the, in, in the US. Um, so I, I eventually contacted Charlotte Patterson mm -hmm. and I got, I got one of her dogs uh, called Manny, uh, general manager his name was and he did a lot of winning for me and he was, did a nice job and so charlotte uh uh you know and uh husband edward of course now has passed um i got to know them very well and i in fact visited them many times uh in, in the us and um i also got to know uh people around them and i of course harry smith i also oh, yeah, no. had a and Harry, of course, came to the Philippines. I invited him over to judge, and uh, he had a great time over there judging. Um, He's a wonderful uh, dog man, Dr. Harry. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, yes, yeah. he um, of course, yeah, he must have died one time, I mean, quite a few years ago now. Um, but he, he, yeah, he was very good, and, and I got to know him very well and learned a lot from him. So, you know, these are the pugs I got, uh, many US pugs. I did also look at getting, and I did have some, I did show some Australian pugs, um, uh, but, uh, you know, they were more the English type, um, you know, and so but, uh, I, I was quite eager to try to develop my own lines of pugs, and so I developed over quite a short period of time some nice breedings. Uh, and then I found the black pug. Um, you know, I I always had fawns, and then, I, I didn't, for some reason or other, I didn't really go for black. But then I found blacks, and I, f I find blacks, pugs, so much different in personality because they're much easier to care for because of the coats different. And, and uh, you know, but uh, so the black pugs, of course, have always amazed me. Oh, I didn't know the difference. I didn't know there was a difference in the colors. I knew, that, like, obviously blacks, but I didn't realize there was a difference in their personalities or temperaments. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, like the dachshunds, you know, because the dachshunds, each duck, the three types of dachshunds all have different personalities. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, one thing I decided when I was going to become a judge um, was that I would at least have um, experience in each of the groups with a dog which I lived with and, mm -hmm. and if I could possibly even, you know, uh, take forward and breed and things like that. And so I chose uh, various breeds that I really felt I needed to understand, not just simply from the point of view of a, um, of, a of, of the standard, but also the whole the whole dog, the way they act, their their attitude, how they're supposed to be in in the in the ring as well as out. And so um, that's part of know, it, as far as I'm concerned. You know. Yes, yes, of course, yeah, very much so. But to live and live and be with the dogs, I suppose you know, as a handler, you do that as well. But uh, I've found many uh, judges haven't done that. Many judges in the more traditional countries like Australia or even in um, places in England, places the judges have only ever had one breed, and that's you know that's what they see that one breed. 
um, because they can do that, of course, in Europe. Of course, you can, in Europe, you do 65 dogs a day, that's all, you know, when, when you're critiquing. So you can judge forever by just having two or three breeds uh, in judging. Um, but in other countries like Australia, you can't do that. Australia is like Canada. Most shows in Australia uh, have 50, 60, 80 dogs, 100 dogs, you know, in the, very, in the, in the country places. In fact, a lot of those country shows have now stopped because they just don't have any, any um, exhibitors. So, you know, in, in, it depends on each country, but I, I still feel that the judges need to understand the dog from the, from the essence of what it is in, in the house and in the, in, the, in the yard type thing. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I did uh, with pugs because I, I've had, had them all the time. But then other breeds I've had, also in that sense, uh, in the time. Um, but most of the dogs I've had, uh, of course, all the dogs I have, I, I, I keep my dogs forever, <laughs> type thing. I, I am, in fact, I have a, a place in Philippines still. I have a house there, uh, a villa, and uh, where I still have all my dogs. Oh, my good. dogs still live there. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's um, kind of, you know, once you get the dogs, because it's very difficult to, to, to let them go. Although I know some people do, but I'm not into that. And so we have the dogs here in, in the Philippines. Um, but, uh, yeah, so pugs were the original. And actually, I still love the pugs a lot, but I said the black pug is my favourite. How old were you when you first started judging, Bob? Uh, in my 30s, something. Yeah. Yeah. So, something what, what was, what was the first show you judged? Uh, first show I judged, you know, in in, in um, under my training scheme, of course, you start with one breed and then work up. So I did, uh, you know, local shows, uh, but then also I did shows in at the time when I was doing judging. One of the issues that I have and I still have with a lot of, well, of training of judges is that they don't get the exposure to breeds that, and dogs that they don't see each week. Um, and so what we did was at that time, I organised with uh, somebody who was in Thailand and we kind of swapped judges at that time. So basically, um, we, we would go to Thailand, a Philippine judge would go to Thailand and then some Thai would come to Australia. Sorry, to um, to the Philippines. So the idea was to try and get people expose them to to dogs that they'd never seen before. Yeah, each mm -hmm. country has their breeds that they're strong in, so it's definitely yeah. it's interesting yeah. that aspect mm -hmm. of it. That's a good idea. Yeah, uh, and I think in Asia that's happening a lot more nowadays. In Asia, it's become much more of a um, you know the, led by the FCI group, the Asia FCI group. And uh, they're doing a lot of work on trying to get the you know, judges, up, you know, local judges. Because in China, of course, they've also been very proactive on getting judges. And, you know, I've judged a lot in Ch China. And um, every time you go to China, you also do um, uh, discussions with judges and you have them in the ring with you and this type of thing as well. So it, it's happening very, very... But in China, of course, you know, the number of uh, um, dogs that they'll eventually have uh, they have to have local judges other they just couldn't afford i think to bring in foreign judges all the time and so they're doing that quite regularly now um and there's some very good judges developing in, in china as well yeah, i was there um, about five years ago and it was moving along really well and they had some good dogs when i was there so yeah marines you know yeah yeah strong. they have this they have like a lot of a lot of countries. You have you get end up getting a, a few jo dogs at the top area, and then and then you might not get so much down below. So it's 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 happening in all these countries. Um, but uh, you know, because the Philippines had the longest history of dogs, along with Japan, and now and then Thailand's developed a lot. India's been going for many many years. Uh, India has some very good uh, breeds as well. They're their own local breeds. I did a show there actually in February, just before the the uh, COVID closed down, mm -hmm. and I did uh, a lot of uh, big numbers of of the local dogs around um, uh, Tamil Nadu in the south. Um, we uh, we did um, you know this, the the kind of 
the, it's called, I think, uh, the caravan dogs and things like that. They had various breeds, but I had a large number of them, I think nearly 100 local breed dogs, as well as all the, all the British breeds and American breeds. Yeah, because in India, uh, in, in my part world, anyway, I see a lot of Irish setters and beagles and and I because they send me, or they, they, I'm friends with a lot of them on Facebook, so I see a lot of their dogs. Their dogs look good, too. They're doing a good job in preparing them, and, and, and looks like even type-wise they're doing a good job. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have of the, the longer-term British link as well, so you get, you tend to, but there's been a few American dogs, North American dogs coming through, mm -hmm. and of course there's also some of the Brazilian dogs, and you know, it's a quite a mixture, uh, but they also have very good German Shepherds. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, when I was in the Philippines, uh, Philippines had a very long history of uh, the German Shepherd, uh, particularly with the um, the German club, um, and uh, so we used to judge by that standard. Um, so you know, you, you know, there's all this running around type thing, and much more of the uh, German style. Uh, um, but in Indonesia, we used to do that for Dobermans. Rottweilers and German Shepherds, um, the Seeger type shows for all, all the three working dogs. But um, here, of course, uh, in, as in Korea and most parts of Asia, they just don't have the, the, the working dogs, they're mostly having the, the smaller dogs. As, um, as a judge, because you've judged all over the world, do you have certain dogs that are, that are stuck in your head, in your mind's eye, that, that you wished you could have either been part of or owned? Um, you know, there, there was, strange enough, there is one dog, I don't, know, I don't know its name or whatever, but many, many years ago, I judged in Germany at, the, um, at a very big show there, uh, and I did Shih Tzu, Shih Tzu, and... This Shih Tzu just came into the ring and it just, it was black and white, it just floated the ring. No, no straight, it was loose handled, it just simply floated around the ring. It, as though the body wasn't even uh, there. Just, a, just sort of, it's unbelievable. I always remember that dog. And unfortunately, since I've seen that dog, whenever I see a Shih Tzu, I will compare it against that dog. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the sense of, you know, the standard. But, yeah, but the black sheep, the other dog which I really, um, really, really kind of uh, got to appreciate in my mind um, was a, a dog I judged in um, 2002. Uh, now, I don't know if I remember this dog because of the timing or not, but I was in West Virginia. And that uh, just in 20, because the, um, I just actually showed the dog in late 2001, 9-11. You know, um, I happened to be in Washington, D.C. for work. And and also I was going to do a dog show as well. In And I did the dog. So I was able to take the train uh, from Washington, D.C. Um, to Connecticut area and things like that. Anyway, but basically I went there and... I gave uh, best in show to a magnificent, what I thought was a magnificent um, miniature black poodle. And, uh, you know, name was, was Surrey Spice Girl. Oh, and, yes, of course, yes. And then the following year, she won Westminster. Yeah. That dog, I could not believe it when I saw it. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And I, I gave her the uh, best in show and um you know so she was the, you know so th these are the two dogs that i really remember judging um having of course seeing other dogs i've seen many dogs um that i really appreciate a lot um and you know I, i've done shows also in 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 uh, england as well and and an another dog I, I really liked was a uh several of the whippets in england i am very much I, I think that they've got the a nice part to them i've also judged of course a lot of basenjis mm -hmm. i have a basenji and 
uh, and um, I, I la last year, yeah, I judged uh, the Canadian Basenji Nationals. Yeah, I was Australia. there. Yes, yeah, yeah, and the Australian. I did the Australian Basenji Nationals as well last year. Um, so I did the two two lots of Basenji Nationals uh, in 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 that time. Yeah, so it, it's it's uh, it's quite nice. Um, I do like I do prefer doing and do like doing um, uh, specialty shows. Mm -hmm. um, I know doing all breed shows is is the norm in most for all breed judges. Um, you know, one year in in two thousand something to four or five, I remember I did seven thousand dogs. I judged seven thousand dogs that year. Oh wow! <laughs> in 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 I think. In all, uh, I think five continents. So you're um, for all groups, then, Bob? Yeah, um, I've been uh, been all breeds for a while now, but I, you know, uh, also for the US, AKC, and then also FCI uh, as well. But you know, of course, um, as you quite right, right said, you end up doing certain breeds. Because those are popular in each country type thing. And in Asia, it's very similar, the breeds that you do. Um, but I do like doing even, you know, um, uh, I did a, I once did a, a, a specialty, uh, uh, the Russian Terrier, toy te Russian Toy Terrier. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know if they're recognised in Those Canada yet. No, they are not. So... But anyway, they are now in Australia and in many other countries. But um, at that time, I did it in, in Moscow. I was, I think, 1990-something. I did uh, a show in Moscow, and uh, I did them, and I had literally, you know, they, they were everywhere. I think there must have been a hundred of them. And um, I don't know if you know the breed well, but no, the, breed, the breed has yet to stabilise, shall we say. Um <laughs> and so um, it's it's got a lot of different types, um, and depending, you know, its variation is there. And so, um, you know, I, I really felt that I had to just go for a certain style, and uh, but uh, I found some very nice ones. There were some extremely nice ones there, but the issue is that there was so much variation. But yeah. doing a specialty like that, it really makes your mind, you know, go in. Um, at that same sh that same time, I did a I did the um, the another, another quite other. There was actually a um, Neapolitan Master. I didn't do it, but there was a Neapolitan Master specialty there as well, and there were about 160 of them, wow. and I I really enjoyed uh, those seeing them. Um, so you didn't very, judge those; you just watched those. You yeah 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 that'd be a, that'd be something to see 100 of those or 100 more of them. Mm. We used to have in the Philippines. Uh, there was a guy who bred them in the Philippines, and we would get twenty, um, twenty or thirty of them. Um, it's and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, they're 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 actually quite a nice dog. Um, you know, so it, it, each place has its own breeds. Um, you know, the Tibetan mastiffs in in India, and the ones in China, of course, are quite different. Mm -hmm. um, and the Tibetan Mastiffs, uh, I, I was in um, outside, just outside um, the, um, uh, the in Lahore is in Pakistan, uh, and so uh, on the other side is very is basically the other side of um, is uh, in India, uh, um, and there's a person there who breeds absolutely beautiful Tibetan Mastiffs. Um, and he w was in partnership with somebody in the US. Unfortunately, she died. But he, he has a lot of his dogs in the US as well. And uh, I spent a lot of time going over the dogs and in, in his kennel, um, his Grow Grand Kennel. Um, but uh, again, you know, it's good to be able to be able, go to breeders like this, especially these breeds which are not as popular everywhere else, mm -hmm. and just go over, over them. So as a judge, you've always got to find, uh, you know, Opportunity, uh, and and take opportunity as it comes to get to know breeds better uh, in each area, um, which I find very 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 important. Well, I uh, think that once you're in this sport, you're a student for life. It seems so. Exactly. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's why one thing, you know, I've told other, uh, the younger judges when we, we get together is I said, you'll never stop learning. You know, every day you will go to a dog show and you will uh, understand something better. Yeah. You might understand, you might have understood it before, but you understand it better when you, you know, either talk to somebody or you get to feel something or do something, um, you know, and I think also people have to realise you can't, judge from outside the ring <laughs> you know people people think oh you know you can judge from outside the ring there's no way oh, yeah. you know i'm much more of a hands-on person yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting because you'll you'll watch a large even when you're are watching and i'll sit and watch a large specialty and things start to click you start to see what the essence of the breed is and you start it starts to click yeah. in your mind what you think you should be looking for so yeah i went to the to do that a few years ago I, a long time, long time ago, I went to the Louisville circuit. Oh, that's and, uh, uh, in Dalmatians, a thousand, I'm talking about a thousand one Dalmatians. They had, I think they said they had you know, 20 or 30 uh, national specialties or something. Yeah. I, uh, the, uh, the, the, I went to, I looked at, spent a lot of time with the Dalmatian one, but also with the others as well. It's quite uh, other specialties or some quite nice dogs. Until um, so you judge there then? No, no, I just went. I actually, I just went there to see it. Okay. I was judging. I was judging somewhere else, and in the states, and then I kind of just dropped by. <laughs> uh, what have been day. some of your most memorable assignments then? Uh, every assignment I find exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I, That's good. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, you know. One thing I've learned is that, in fact, one thing which was told to me many, many years ago is it doesn't matter if it's in the middle of nowhere, uh, those people have paid the same money to bring their dog for your opinion. So you've got to give them the same as you give somebody at a big top-notch show. Um, and I, I, I realise that many times over. You, you know, uh, like, I, I always, if, if a club asks me to come, and it's in the middle of nowhere. I always accept it. I don't. I don't care about you know. You know. I know some people feel that you know it's a it's the same old show, but it's not. Every show is different, and every show has people who really want to have a show. So uh, yeah. it's always. Uh, mm. uh, that's sort of when I was as a handler, as a young handler, I was given some advice. It was by uh, Jane Forsyth, and she always told me. I showed primarily up here in Canada, and she said. A best in show is a best in show, no matter where you are, because by the end of the day, they usually end up with seven or really good dogs. And when you win that best in show, it could be over a hundred dogs or over a thousand dogs or over two thousand dogs. It's still a best in show, and, and to appreciate that win, no matter what. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but having said that, um, you know, I think what makes a show for a judge. Uh, as opposed for an exhibitor or for a committee member, is actually the is simply just the simplicity or the ease with which you're handled by the club. Mm -hmm. the, the you know I think um, people have, have got it on their mind. The dogs, they, the judge has to, has to think through things. There, it is a stress. It can be stressful. And it can be physically stressful. As well. And I think that. You know, judges appreciate clubs that actually say to them, well, you know, do you really want to go out for dinner tonight? On the, you know, if you're doing, a, say, a two- or three-day show, yeah. or maybe we'll just have one dinner at the end of the thing or something like that. Um, I think this is always a, a, you know, there are some little things which some clubs have found and do. Um, they, you know, they don't try and feed you 500 different cakes and, you know, and all this stuff. But you, they, they appreciate that you are there to judge and that you you know you need some quiet time some relaxation time outside the ring so you know so the club when, when i judge when i think of clubs that i've judged with okay i think of the dogs but the exhibitors if they're good and you know friendly but also i think of the clubs and the clubs appreciate the judges needs um as much as the everybody else's needs mm -hmm. you know um I did judge in one country. I won't name it, um, but I, you know, it that it, the there was actually um, my daughter who you've probably met as well. But she came with me, um, and uh, 
we were in a um, in this country the morning it had it was raining but of course the show started on time uh, nine o'clock uh and i had 140 dachshunds to do and i had to had to uh weigh weigh them oh yeah so it was a requirement then of course after i uh you know after about an hour it started to uh hail hailstones came down <laughs> and and but we continued judging oh show must go on yeah show must go on and then and then of course it got it, the, the ground was so messy the dogs couldn't stand okay that was okay i don't mind i've i've judged in snow and i've judged everywhere else but then what happened was so i finished judging in mid-afternoon because it took you know you had to critique everybody as well and things then of course uh, i said oh, it looks oh, we're gonna have any lunch then and they said oh oh, oh they're sorry uh, they had lunch before and all the food is gone and then <laughs> and then and then they said oh and you're also going to be judging three groups as well which they hadn't put on the hadn't told me before so you know and so i always remember that show i vaguely remember the dogs but i but i do remember the things which you know would have made this that would made the day a little bit better for everybody um so as a judge you know and i really like clubs that really appreciate their judges and and actually think think of the judge as well sure. um you know I, I've, run, I've run many many shows in the past and one thing that i hope they can say is that they actually you know we did the right thing by them by the judge um but yeah you know, that's something which we've, we've, we tend to find but uh well, i hope canada looks after you well each time you come always always <laughs> <they> always do <laughs> but um uh, yeah so i i quite uh, as i said I've, you know whenever i judge i try to also um you know find out what the dogs are in that area this type of thing um, the other thing with Joe's advised young judges on, or judges, other judges, is do is that they, when they go to a show, you have to judge to the standard, to the system, uh, and to the to the country's way. Um, I, I find some judges uh, basically spend a lot of time saying, "Oh, we should do it this way." We sh you know it should have been done that way because that's what we've done you know why are they changed that or well, this standard is different and i think um you know i spend a lot of time before i go to judging i, I always read this try to read all the standards in for that country uh -huh. because some because they are quite different oh, um, very, very you know quite different from even from canada and the us and um and so you know you 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 know you're you're going there to judge the show and the other thing is is also the but the system um you know people you know systems are there to, because they're regulated or rest of you know which dogs come in on time you know this something so i i've always felt that those are two big things that you as a judge you must just fundamentally accept you've read the standards and you know the system of judging of that country um, I, I agree because he, we do get a lot of we'll get some judges over from europe and they'll they'll almost fight you on things because it's not how it's done in their country and yeah. it doesn't make for the the day enjoyable at all sometimes uh, so. and also it upsets the ups you know what the other thing of course is i as a judge i notice a lot it you know if the if the handlers and the others in the in the, in the exhibitors are upset the dogs will be upset mm -hmm. it goes straight down the line oh, yeah, straight down the lead and and you'll see and you won't get the best out of the dogs and actually ultimately that's what a judge wants to do is make sure the dogs you know show themselves in, effectively and all rest um and so that's very very important help them help them move it forward uh and but it's keep to, the, to those basic standards um yeah you kind so of answered my question but i was hoping like for the advice for young judges you 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 touched on a lot of things is there anything else you would you would want to give them advice on um, how long have you been judging now bob uh, 
Yes. Actually, yeah, I, I was 35 years now. Now I'm trying to add up how old you are, so you know, you know just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, because I don't think of myself as an old judge. No. Um, no, I'm I'm very active and young, um, but I I think that uh, young judges and you know I've talked to a lot of when I talk about young judges here, um, I'm thinking of in Asia you have a lot of judges as I said who have had limited experience on certain breeds, and that um, what they should do is you know and I think that also in some even in Australia to a degree and others it's getting that exposure to other breeds um you know which is quite important but uh but not simply a book learning but you know actually going and touching the dogs and feeling and going over them and things like that now in australia we used to have before because and still have uh, you know these you know shows where you you know op open shows that is cool um but i hear from a lot of people they're not not as popular as they were in the past and you know, not, maybe not getting the number of dogs and things. So you have to find a way that you can go to the breeders uh, and find them. Um, the other thing is that I think the big issue with young judges is that getting them to um, understand that they have to um, appreciate every dog that comes in the ring. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm you know, if judging styles are either positive or negative. You either start with zero and work up to 100, or you start with 100 and work down to zero. And different countries have different ways of doing it. I'm a zero upwards to 100 um, when I'm, you know, when I'm thinking through the dogs, uh, through the standard. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's important that you understand what are all, you know, what are the four or five basic, what makes that the breed? Uh, give that the weighting, and 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 work up that, and then then the other parts, the, the movement, or you know the various other you know the so-called five parts of a, of a of a judging, you know everything from types through to, to temperament, etc. Um, so the idea is to move through those things that make that breed a breed, and then what what is the fine tuning of that? Uh, because basically every dog. You, you have to go over is you have to sort of in your mind how far is it towards the standard towards the hundred um and that's the way i, I work it um that's a very in, positive way of looking at it that's good i like that yeah it's so, it's yeah, so because, easy to you know, fall into a fault judging and, and just but to, to work your way up and go through all the the virtues of the dog that's that sounds like the best way to yeah, yeah. It, 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 it helps you because it makes you find the best dog the best one which represents the breed standard. Um, whereas, you know, in other places, when you're going down the list with, you know, and saying, okay, it's got, uh, you know, uh, one missing tooth, so minus, or, you know, it's too many subparts. Right. And, and you end up not necessarily with the best dog. Um, you might have the dog which ticks off all the boxes, but maybe not the best overall dog because it, it doesn't have, doesn't bring out the best points. I agree. Um, I, I find I've always said that, that anybody even sitting at ringside can pick out what's wrong with most dogs other than their mouth and whatnot. But, yeah. you know, it's, it's, that's, that's not their, your job is, well, I feel a judge's job is to tell us what's good about the dog, not what's wrong with the dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's one thing I would tell them. Uh, the other thing is, which I think I'd still like to emphasise again, what I was saying before, is that you know know your standards really well, but don't just know the standards. What I did in the Philippines for many years, we used to run training courses um, for all the judges and exhibitors together, and uh, and we'd get many of the old specialist judges who would come in or the judges who come in special judges, and they do give a lecture on their particular breed. And, you know, there are so many breeds which colour can be very, very um, difficult to understand. Um, and uh, unless you understand that colour, you also are not going to... Because, you know, the colour, of course, of, of a breed has been determined for a certain reason, especially in the hunting breeds and few... You know. mm. so, 
So the issue is that understanding those fine points, not that there is a colour, you know, there's a fawn or whatever, whatever. It, it's actually, you know, what is that colour? Uh, what are you looking for in a, in a proper conditioned coat and things like that? So those types of things are quite critical for a judge to get, uh, every judge. Uh, but newer judges have to go and listen and talk about that. Um, you know, you know, the, uh, you know, the thing like, for example, for poodle is what is a silver poodle? You know, um, it might sound very simple as silver, but actually, if you really talk to a really, the, the, the two poodle people, silver has a very set, re, you know, understanding. It's not, it's not a, a, a dark white or a light blue. You know, <laughs> so, you know, you, you can get, so you have to know how, what they want. Uh, what the breeders are have done for many many years and developed as a judge, um, because and you know and you only have two you only have two minutes or even less than that in some cases to actually do the judging. Exactly. So you need, yeah. and that's that would be my third biggest one, which I think is the biggest peeve for many exhibitors um, is judges who take too long to come to the wrong decision. Um, you know I've seen judges. Uh, in some places where they've sent a dog around 14 times, um, you know, and, it, you know, the, the exhibitors, everybody else, you know, if you make it, you you, you, you have to, again, because you're not looking at the upwards, you're looking at, the, you're trying to find fault oh, as I'm opposed to... Trying to talk yourself out of something. So. Yeah. So, so it's very, very important for judges to also keep good timing, um, to understand timing and to keep good timing. Um, and, and actually, to a degree, that's why I like having, I like doing specialties. I like spending more time with <laughs> the same breed because, you know, I, I suppose the last thing, which is I, I reiterated before, was the problem is basically you have a situation where judges are under a lot of stress in the ring, and they're under more stress if they've got 25 different breeds coming in in one hour. You know, just thinking of the of the standards for each breed. So, you know, get used to that, um, but because that's going to be the realities of most judges. Uh, but but always look forward to doing a nice specialty, and then you can, you know, really really right. go into it in detail. Mm. Like a, a, a very famous judge once told me we were talking about a certain judge that was taking too long, and he turned to me and she said, "They don't get any better, William. They just get older." <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've been, I've, I've been, I've unfortunately done two shows um, where, one in England and one in Australia, where the judges were, sorry, not in England, it was in, no, it was in, in Holland, in, 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 um, it was a Rotterdam show. Rotterdam and, 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 uh, and Australia, in Sydney, where, you know, basically I was told, okay, because so I'd finished my thing, they actually just took the, took the, final breeds off both judges uh, because they were just too slow. They wouldn't get to finish. And so um, one of them was even worse than that. One of them, I did a final set of breeds and then I also did her group and she still hadn't finished. And then she came across after, and her, her group had already finished. <laughs> I'd already done the group. Um, but, you know, it's not a very nice thing. But the thing is that clubs in some countries just do that. It's... There's just no no mucking around. Yeah. They can't afford to to have basically people there till ten o'clock, eleven o'clock at night. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and so basically, they they will just take the dogs off the judges. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I wish we could do that over here sometimes, but we can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you, I have a question for you, Bob. If you could have dinner with a, a, a dog show person that has passed, who would you choose to have dinner with? Very simple. That was very, very simple. Flora McKenzie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love <laughs> Flora. She was wonderful. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I judged, uh, I've judged in her, uh, up in that, uh, what's it called? Uh, Nova Scotia. Yeah. <laughs> I've judged yeah. there five, five times. I love it. Um, but, and, uh, and, and, but the reason I say that is because Flora taught me a lot about uh, particularly 
uh, Shih Tzu and also uh, Maltese and, and Pekingese. You know, uh, I'm kind of known as a Pekingese picker. I, I, I've, uh, I, I judged, uh, you know, I don't know if you know the, the Pekingese uh, breeder in, in England, um, yak, yak, Yaki or something, Yaki. Good. Anyway, they, they, in one year, uh, wait there, I was going to, I was gonna trying to, you know, it's Y-A-N-K-E-E. -E. Um, it's in one year, I gave a best in show to um, one of their dogs in in Australia, two, in two places in Australia, but different dogs that they'd sent to Australia. And I gave another one in uh, a best in group to one in, in Finland or somewhere like that. And then and this is the same breeder. They just produce these absolutely magnificent Pekingese. Um, you know, when you pick them up, they're picked correctly up and their faces, a whole lot, you know, so well, you know, lovely small male, you know, who's just, you know, arrogant as hell and sound <laughs> as sound. So, you know, I, 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 I like Pekingese. And, but it's amazing how somebody is implanted on that. The other one who, and so she, she taught me a lot about what, you know, about the, the coated breeds. Um, she, she knew her coated breeds well. Many people don't know coated breeds, I don't think. They, you know, because they basically don't go over the dog so much. You know, I always remember Flora telling me um, when she, you know, she put the, I think it was a shih tzu on the table, and she said, okay. She went over the dog, and she said, I know exactly how it's going to move. And she told me how it's going to move, and it moved that way. You know, it, it, she didn't need to see it move to know how it's going to move because she knew the structure, etc. So that's, you know, uh, that's why I, I really appreciated her. And, uh, you know, she was a great, a great, great person. Um, and because uh, she was a New Zealander, you know that. I did not know she that. She came from New Zealand. I know, she, she, uh, she was a stewardess on the planes. And, um, and her, her, the husband, uh, he was the pilot. But she, she um, I judged with her in New Zealand, in Australia, in all over the world. I've judged with her. Uh, but she, she's, a, she's, a, she's a real great person. Oh, we, we, we loved her. She was great. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it looked a little crazy, but she was great. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was part of the fun of her. <laughs> I, I always remember um, being picked up at, uh, what's that airport in Nova Scotia? Uh, it's the international airport there. Um, anyway, Halifax. Yeah, Halifax, yes. So she picked me up and, it, you know, it was in the middle of winter and uh, the, the, the snow and ice and everything. And she was going along about 100 miles an hour. <laughs> 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 I thought, oh, you know, will we ever make it? <laughs> yeah, but no great person. There are so many, many great people like that. You know, I, I do like, to a degree, the European shows because you get a lot more judges. You know, I've judged uh, several shows in Finland, for example, and in other parts. But in Finland, there was one show that had 170 judges, you know, over, you know, there was, I think, there was somewhere 7,000 dogs or something, but it but basically 100, because you could only do, um, in Finland, 65 dogs a day. Um, and so, you know, you had uh, lots of judges. And, you know, so it was very, very, it's very nice because then you can sit and talk to really specialist judges. Mm -hmm. Another one who I'd like to uh, have uh, dinner with, Hans Lettinen. I don't oh. know if you know Hans. Yeah, yeah Hans, Hans would have been one of your European judges telling you what the, how to fix things. Um, <laughs> he was a great guy. I, I really liked him as well. He, he really did a lot of uh, uh, good things for the dog world, I think, you know. Um, he may have been a bit, bit, you know, rough, bit whatever, but he actually, I think, did had all the good things in mind. Um, and... Uh, he had some good dogs as well, um, you know. He had some good terriers and things like that in his day. So, you know, I enjoyed those. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there, there would be two of the people, Flora. Of course, Harry Smith I really enjoyed as well, um, being around him. I know it's, it's getting late there. I'm sorry. One last question for you. 
If you could give advice to the 20 year old Robert Dawson, what advice would you give him? Um, I think that the biggest uh, advice I would give is to do what I've done, but do it better. Because in many cases, what I did, like for example, went overseas. I learnt things from many people, but I was always a little bit apprehensive. I am not your you know, big gregarious person. I, I tend, to, tend to sit and listen to things. I think in the judging area and in the dog world area, I should have been a bit more proactive uh, um, in doing those things um, in the sense of understanding where I want to be. Um, sometimes I think I fell into things rather than necessarily plan them out, which is not that bad. But um, I think in today's world, it's really a bit more of a planning things out, but making sure you will get what you want and what you think is needed quicker. Um, you know, um, it's not easy. It's, I think... It wasn't easy. It's never been easy for doing any of these things, but it's it's getting harder. Um, the realities of life are there's less people involved in dogs now. There's less dog shows. There's less, you know, therefore there's less appointments and less things. So you really need to be a bit more uh, outward going, a bit more noticed. Um, I've tended to do things, but I think maybe I just do it a bit, bit harder, a bit more and in, in try to get there. Um, yeah, that, that's what I think how I advised myself at that time. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that I've done everything right. In fact, I'm not really so. But the things that I would like to have done better, I should have done better. Mm. Well, we've noticed you, Bob. So don't worry about that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I must say, I must. So I have enjoyed coming to Canada. I've been, actually, I think I can't remember the first time. I must have come to Canada maybe twenty years ago. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I once did a very strange set of shows. I did three shows in Vancouver area. I think with Donna. Donna's another person, but she hasn't passed. But I hope, um, but she, she's another person I've got, got on Donna Cole. You know, I did three. Before, I used to use the same judges a lot, and they would have yes. the West. Yes, I, yeah. So I did. I did three shows in um, in Vancouver, I think. Then I did three shows in Columbus, Ohio, or somewhere like that. Some some place in the US, and then I did another three shows the following weekend. I think it was in um, it was in Toronto area. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, the uh, in Toronto. Was that uh, the Valley Show? The Erie Lake. Oh, 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 Erie Shores. I think you were. I think you were talking about. I think you did the Trade X shows, which was Lower Mainland, and I yes. think, then you came east. And I think you may have judged the Credit Valley Show, one of our last shows of the year. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was it? Yeah. Was it a really yeah. relatively big show? Yeah. I think it was Credit Valley then. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've, done quite, I've done quite a lot of shows in Canada, in all places. I like the, I like actually the Red Deer. Yeah. Shows. You know, I did Red Deer when they only had, you know, we had three days of shows and uh, three judges or something like that. It was a very, you know, I think 300 dogs. And, and that was maybe 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I did a, I've done it, I think, four times. And every time I've been there, every second or third year, they've got virtually double their numbers. The last time I went there, their show was really quite number huge. They had quite a large number of dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, in you know, Red, you know, Red Deer, of course, is in the middle of the two, you know, Edmonton and uh, and yep. uh, Calgary. But I really, I really love those people there. They, they it's a, you know, so I think it's four times I've done that show. Yeah, they have fun out there. Yeah, it's a good. It, they're good, 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 good lot of people, but that's what you get in most places. Most places there are good lots of people who are whose only concern is to have 
a, a, you know, a nice show and, and not, uh, you know, too much of hassles and things. That's important. For sure. And also for the judge. <laughs> Yeah. I won't keep you any longer, Bob. I know it. I know it's getting late there. I really appreciate that you put this time aside for us. Uh, it's good to see you and catch up, and uh, let the let our dog world over here know what you're doing, what you're up to, since we since you can't leave and judge over here right now. But no. hopefully, our world will open back up again soon, and we'll get to see everybody again. So. Yeah, we hope so too. I think that's that's very very important. Okay, good. All right, Bob. Well, you have a good Thank night. You very much. And uh, Thank you. we'll talk to you soon. Well, thank you, Bob. It was good to see you. It looks like you're keeping yourself busy during this COVID time. Um, if you like what we're seeing here, or you're, we're doing here, make sure you press the like, share, and subscribe button. If you want to send me a message or ask me some questions, go to dogshowtips at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find out what's happening in Will's world, go to willalexander.net. Until next time, thanks.